Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay, that's good. Uh, I can hear myself now too. Wonderful. I have the bot lane here with me as well, Supa and Alvaro. Uh, after what a crazy day. Insanity. Uh, we were talking about it now, how you played so many games today, which is something that you don't often get the chance to. Uh, I'll go to each of you separately first, maybe Supa first. Um, how relieved are you that you made it happen today? I mean, not gonna lie, I, I was watching Haikyuu today and yesterday a lot. And when they were playing, they were just thinking, I just want to win to keep playing more. So that's why my, was my mentality today. And it works. I mean, me is kind of as well the mentality. Like I didn't want to, to take a break because we could still qualify for season finals, but I wanted to play these playoffs. And it's also kind of like, I really enjoy it because when it gets more into the night, I like playing solo queue and all these type of things. <laughs> so it kind of felt like it was a long day and I'm still like down to play solo queue when I go back home. Uh, it was kind of insane the way you turned on for this game specifically, because I think Odo and I were watching and you were ramping up, I think, throughout the day. But of course, there's the question of Vitality is a completely different opponent than Rogue, right? But Odo, it, this was the most convincing game I've seen from, from MDK, probably, maybe also? Yeah, Are? definitely. <laughs> Everyone was completely on point, but it also goes to show because we've seen MDK struggle throughout the split and then coming into today, how much a little bit of confidence can do? Because all of a sudden, hope is, they win one game, hope is alive. It still looks rough, but then they win again, and then against Vitality, man, this was your most convincing game, I think, for the whole split. You guys are a completely different animal. Yeah. Um what was it then that started it from the bot lane? Because we highlighted the bot lane matchup as one of the most important ones. And I think, Supa, for you, um, I mean, for you too, as a bot lane, you had very lofty aspirations. You talked about how good you, you wanted to be and what you wanted to show. And I can understand that that was probably really frustrating to play this split because I felt like we know you're better than this, right? Uh, did some of this come out in this game? I mean, I think uh, during all the matches that we played this split, I was feeling if we were playing best of three or best of five, I believe we, we will do way, way better because I think we are just choking. And after you choke one game, the next one, you play way, way better, no? So I think the first victory that we again choke at minute 40 we start playing was like so, so good for us that after this, we got the confidence that we were lacking all the split. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing that we can expect Good things from you when it comes to the best ofs. How much um, do you agree with your bot lane partner there, Alvaro, that it is really in best of threes and best of fives where you think you guys shine? And why do you think it is in terms of how you build your team and your drafts and how you approach games that you're better in the best ofs? I mean, I think best of three and best of fives, as especially like it's even as well more fun. But uh, I think as a team, we are better in this type of uh, best of fives because it's kind of in one game, is what Supa said. We talk a bit, then we are like more motivated, and then there is nothing else. For example, now going into the best of threes, we don't know still who are we facing, mm -hmm. but other times we started facing G2 and Fnatic. So, I mean, it's mostly thinking right now that we could be out. Like, for example, if today SK didn't lose, and also thanks to Isma because he's my friend and they, they yeah. managed to, to take the win. I mean, it's just so insane right now that I'm thinking if, if, we, if one thing changes, we will be out. But I just have the opportunity now to go on the best ofs, and I think we are a stronger team there. Yeah, you're right. It's so crazy how, like, um, I can only think of the German words, it's like schicksal, but like how everything, every domino has to fall and it falls in a certain yes. way. And you think that maybe this is the way the journey should have gone. But I don't think that makes it any easier mentally because for you two as players, right, you come in to the LEC in winter, uh, nobody believes in you, you get to the final, everyone believes in you all of a sudden. And then you have to adjust to now being a team again in the rest of the year that you're struggling, right, in the games. Yes. You're not showing what you do. What did that do to you as a competitor? And do you think you came out the other end stronger. I mean, I can say like, it's really frustrating because you see that things are working in, in, in practice, then it doesn't work, then you find a new problem, you fix it and it makes another problem happen. So it's kind of like frustrating in a way, but we are also like training mentally to not be this frustrated or at least uh, make this frustration into be more motivated. And I think, for example, today, 
uh, we were in a really good mindset, uh, like mindset, because we have been here since 4, 4 p.m. most likely, and now I think it's like 11 something, and we have been everyone doing their routines. We have been doing sports, keeping our heads in the game, uh, also keeping it out. So I think it's mostly the most important thing right now that we are stepping up today. It's kind of like mentally, I would say. Okay, super. You want to say anything about that? I mean, I can't think too much right now. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm out. I I'm so happy for for today. Like I'm really happy about myself and, and everything. How I improved from the last week. So and the team as well that we step up and finally I see my team. You know, in official, no. So I'm super happy. And I think it must be such a huge confidence boost in the sense where you guys went through the winter split being amazing, spring split being a little bit, uh, summer split being a little bit, uh, literally until the last possible moment and you guys ramping up super hard, especially going to BOs, you guys said that you always had the confidence that you would win, but right now it's equal playing ground. So I'm curious, what are you guys looking forward for this, uh, this next playoff series? Considering everything starts from zero, you guys get a clean slate to reproduce what you've been doing in, uh, in winter because all the other teams are also going to be ramping up. I mean, it's, I think it's still like keep ramp, ramping on as well as because uh, right now I think we got the momentum after winning because the confidence you could see it in the games, we were doubting a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's mostly right now in playoffs. What I want to, to do is playing into the best teams because I think there are strong opponents in these playoffs. Like there is not a single team that you can, you know, like, okay, should be like easier. I think every single game is hard and it's what makes it fun because it's really like in a way hard the competition. So I think uh, right now we probably have to face uh, SK or BDS on the first round or, and we will have a hard group. And I think it's what makes it like really enjoyable to, to go for the playoffs now. We will be uh, getting to those groups in just a second, but first we are going to say goodbye to Vitality as well. And Laura is standing by, I believe, with Mac in the Marriott Bonvoy post-game check-in. Thank you, Sharks, and thank you, Mac, of course, for joining me. I know that it's it's not an easy moment, of course, for Vitality, so I do appreciate uh, the time. Something that I want to ask you first is, of course, it's a disappointment for all of you, coaches included. I think we don't think enough of you guys and the fact that you carry all the players' emotions. So. When they left the stage and they had to meet you, I feel like you have to. I feel like you have to help them, and I feel like you have to make them calm. What, what happens in these kind of moments? Because you're all in this together, and everyone is feeling the same thing. Oof. Um, in this case, it's tough because uh, there's not much to say. Yeah. You know, um, the reality is that we that we fell short, we failed, and that's uh, that's ultimately my responsibility, okay. right? Um, everything that happens here is is my responsibility. Um, and uh, the only thing that I can really do is, is try my best to comfort them yeah. and um, to apologize to them, right? Because it's, it's on me at the end, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, I think I let them down. I, I, know, I know how much you love your players and I know how much you care for them and how, how much you take care of them, actually, and what this project meant for you. And we kept on saying that this is a long project, so I know that this is the <laughs> beginning of a long project that, of course, is going to carry on, on to next year. No, but that's the hope for me. But before we talk about this, as a coach, what have been the learnings for you from this experience from this year that you're, that you're going to carry and that's going to help you in the future? Mm, well, as, uh, as failures go, this is a pretty big failure, so there's probably a lot to learn, to be honest. I think, uh, I think once we get some distance. I think already um, we've had some discussions internally about how we got here. <laughs> and uh, I think <clears throat> for me, it all comes down to process in the end of the day, right? And I think that's, um, that's my whole mindset towards, towards having a long-term project and towards, towards coaching in general, right? It's about being process focused. And uh, I think there are many aspects in which uh, we let our process slip or didn't stay true to our, to our process and our, and our philosophy. Mm -hmm. Um, or there were certain things that we were we were blind to that we realized too late. I think um, we invested some of our time in practice poorly. I think we didn't do a good enough job at um, kind of correcting some of the biases and assumptions that were present in our team. Um, and you can do that through a number of ways, right? You can do it by looking at other pro players, other teams. You can do it through stats. You can do it through many different ways, right? And I think we ended in a situation where we just, uh, we came into today and I, I think we got good drafts today, but I think we had so many horrible drafts throughout the split. Uh, and I think that, yes, we got good drafts today and yes, we had the tools to win today, but I think by this point, so much of our confidence had just 
evaporated mm -hmm. because of all of the prior mistakes kind of adding up. Um, and that put us in really, really, really high stress situations where ideally we, well, well when we weren't ready for them yet. Yeah. Uh Adapt and overcome, I want to say, and I, I say this in the sense that I completely trust you to bounce back and from the lowest low there is right now, they're going to be a higher high again. And Mike, thank you so much again for sharing these moments. We don't often get to hear uh, about what happens backstage like this. So thank you so much and looking forward to next year. Thank you. Thank you. And back to you, Shox. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, commiserations, of course, the vitality um, of such... Uh, it sucks to say it now, but they're such a frustrating team to watch because of the quality they have. And I'm sure that that is also what we saw come out in that uh, interview from Mac. We'll see what happens. Of course, this is, I mean, you said actually, Alvaro, that they actually have a small chance probably to still make season finals if things go a certain way. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not exactly, but I think they could have a small chance, but I'm not exactly sure. I, I will have to we'll see. We'll check. But I think they have uh, like a steel point that they are on the top six. So I think if they get every everyone out from above, uh, like under, maybe they can make it. Yeah, we don't know right now. We'll have to wait for the playoffs to play out as well. And we actually have the bracket. The draw has been completed backstage. So I'm super excited if I can read this. MDK, right, BDS. BDS. Okay. How do you feel about that matchup? I mean, I think they're a good team and they're in good form right now. Like they yeah. finished 8-1 <laughs> in the league. We lost the game actually like in this week into them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, they later on G2KC as well. I think it's a banger. Okay. Every single game is a banger. It's trial by fire, yeah. It is trial by fire. I mean, if you look at KC, you're like, oh, welcome to the playoffs, finally. You get to play G2. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, GX, welcome. You get to play Fnatic. Uh, I mean, playoffs again, Heritage. as usual. I yeah. never miss those. <laughs> That's, a, um, that's amazing, actually. I'm super excited for how the playoffs will play out. We also a reminder to people at home, we're playing for the playoffs, but we're also playing for teams getting to the season finals and their placements within the season finals. And then, of course, to get to Worlds. So for all the teams that are still in, it could still be a long road to go, right, Odo? Definitely, but it's a huge motivation boost because it doesn't really matter what you did previously in the year. Mm -hmm. As I said to them, it's even, paying, even playing ground right now. Top three, you make season finals. Teams like GX, KC, KC randomly appears in or like <laughs> randomly <Spawn>. randomly <laughs> spawns in playoffs after a disastrous year, but now they're turning around. If they make top three, all of a sudden everything is forgotten and they make season finals, which you couldn't really say at the beginning of the uh, of the split that they had the high chance. And it's the same for everyone. It's it's gonna be hype regardless of the matchups that we're gonna You're get. You're actually now. right. I'm. I'm so excited actually to see, is SK going to be as good as they were, you know? Is it going to keep going? Is Fnatic going to get back to their peak? Is Team Heretics randomly going to pull a 2019 G2? I don't know what I'm saying. Like, you know, there's just so much that can happen. Yeah, I mean, SK usually they are really strong in best of ones, but then later on when it goes best of threes, they were a bit of a worse team. I mean, they almost win into, into Fnatic the last split, mm -hmm. like if they cancel the TP. So <laughs> it, like was, it was really sad. You remember that? That's great. Yeah. Uh, do you think their bot lane has made them a lot better? Are they much scarier? I think they're a stronger team now, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I think they're playing well together as a team. So I think they are still better than the, the other bot lane, but they, I think they improve as a team and probably they know better each other. Okay. Supo, what do you think about the matchup versus BDS? I'm pretty happy because, not gonna lie, I wanted one of these two, SK or BDS, because they won into us and I feel like we could beat them. So finally we will have a good chance to beat them, not a best of one, it's a best of three, so we already beat uh, BDS, so I'm, I'm pretty happy and confident. There's good possibilities. Odo, uh, call one upset in the first round. One upset in the first round? Well... Fnatic beating G GX would be an upset because <laughs> we are the heavy favorites over here. Let's be real. But yeah, that's uh, that's my ma that's the matchup that I'm most excited for. Fnatic GX and G2 K Corp. Yeah, let's see. Uh, I'm really excited. I think you summarized it very well, Oduwami. There is so much possibility, and you can actually turn your entire season around with this extended postseason that we have. We'll be crowning our summer champion and then, of course, our seasonal champion in Munich at the end of all of this. And then we go to Worlds. So there's a lot of good things coming. Uh, I love the serendipity today of the Spanish team getting four wins on the day as the Spanish national team got four goals in the Euros to qualify them to the quarterfinal. It's beautiful sometimes, but that does conclude our regular season for the summer split. Mad Lions Koi made it and we are going on break for one week so we'll get a week for the teams also to regroup and then they will fight for the summer shield when we return with the playoffs on july 12th
Good night. Bye bye. Big thing I want to keep track of in this game. Oh, hold that. Again, slow on to Rahel. Immediate cleanse comes out, but there's just too much damage. Dragon just runs him down. And he can fight with the air, though, and he might not need it. Luan starting to burn, starting to fall down. Kill Kaisa, kill Kaisa, kill Kaisa. I cancelled it. Guluna, Guluna, Guluna. I'm playing. She's dead, she's dead. Nice. No flash, no flash, no flash. That's what we do, guys. That's a lot of pink. Of course, are you a master oh. of a rift uh, like Frescaui, who quickly flashed there? He keep it going. He dodges the hook as well in the meantime. MDK. Happy, by the way. He's gonna pop up. Yeah, Renek. Oh. Renek, 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 Renek. Flashed. We can kill a thing. Yeah. Very good play. Mark. Fnatic looking to try and cement themselves at the top of the table. Maybe carry mid. Does it count on oh. the Corky under turret? Maybe it does under oh, turret. No. Oh no! Yes. Why did you talk? I can. I'm turning you back. I'm <laughs> Revolve around who has pressure in mid, yeah. right? So now because the pressure, oh, Yike is now getting collapsed on. Yeah, he's dead. He's had no flash from before. That's good for Blackus. Let's go. I, I think. think. Oh. Same scene of the. That was crazy, by the way. Uh, yeah, he might Kana. be dead. I mean, flash match. Oh. Dominus AOE. Sora kill from Kana. Up against the wall. It's a disaster. Rogue gets hit from two different angles. Mir with TP is everything. I'm looking for I'm looking for it. See? I'm flash. They go to view! you! Nice. Good job. Hey, I got a kill, guys. Off. Oh. I'm about to kill him. I'm going to stand the one guy, Drake, I think. Just ignore him. No. Okay, kill him. And this one. That's f***! Oh! <laughs> yes. <laughs>